Are you seeing more Americans moving here? Any difference? Any? The American populations had to double. You think they're ruining Valencia? Are they? <laughs> Some things are the same, some things changed, construction going on. Well, this is, this is new. Yeah, it's cool to walk and kind of find the new, new things, new pop-ups. Very typical for Rosafa. Vintage shops, pretty much at every corner. I bet it's very competitive business. Hey. So, hi. Hey, I'm Jimmy. Nice to meet you. Nice, nice to, meet to meet you. So, where are you from? I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia. Yeah. I bet a lot of things changed. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> really a different area now. When we first started coming to Valencia yeah. about almost 20 years ago, I told my wife we should buy something in Rusafa. And she yeah. was like, no, no one lives in Rusafa. But then, you know, uh, you know, you get the artists moving in, you get the younger crowd moving in. Yeah. And, and then it becomes cool. And now this is the place to a live. A lot in. of expats. I know even we lived here for one year mm -hmm. during COVID. We were close to close to the market. Mm -hmm. But different languages everywhere we go. Yeah. But are you noticing like a, an extra extra level of like Americans moving here, extra English speaking crowd. Since I moved here five years yeah, ago, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the American populations had to double. I saw more. it in prices. I saw it in the price in Rustafa. We were yeah. renting for like 850 or something and now uh, it's like double. Yeah, it's gotten, yeah, yeah, it's so crazy. Actually, our apartment just sold. So we were looking to rent and it was so hard. How did you come up with uh, deciding to do a vintage shop? In the States, I'm a photographer. That's that's what I've always, that's been my profession. And then I stumbled on this um, store. A couple had opened it, a couple of friends. So I bought it from her. I knew nothing about vintage. Wow. Around. I mean, literally <laughs> nothing. Anyway, so I've just kind of learned over time. You know, Finding uh, what's good. What's... Yeah, seeing what people like. Yeah. Did you see those pantyhose and the mannequin outside? Mm -hmm. It's um, they have they have skull and oh yeah bones. yeah. I started selling them and all these goth girls started coming in. My first year here, I was pretty much the place for <laughs> goth. Yeah, you never know. One product can just kind of bring everything. I'm curious yeah. to see inside. Yeah, like, you uh, want to yeah, come yeah. check it out? Yeah. These shirts here are from uh, a famous DJ from the 80s and 90s. Like I have a U2 here from uh, from 1993, the Zootopia. Whoa! Isn't that cool? Yeah. But these are all 20, 30 years old. Yeah. I think that's the coolest thing about the vintage that it it kind of carries the memories from yeah. from different times from different moments and brands stop producing and so that's the that's the coolest thing about it i try to be vintage and retro people fall in love with different things right and there's all these uh, americans that are here that are that are retired and it's so cool because they'll bring me their stuff see that's another way of uh, blending borders How are people? How are the locals? Oh, they are amazing. I mean, honestly, uh, Valencians are just great about helping you. And we have, you know, we have the American thing, and I think that's a huge plus because people love Americans, you know, and I think it's yeah. from movies and music. Yeah, and yeah. Look at my, my cool dressing rooms. People love the oh, dressing rooms because they're check big. Check this out. <laughs> when was the last time you were back to the U.S.? Um, it's actually been a little over a year. What are your so, thoughts? Like, how, how do you feel about the temperature there? <laughs> yeah, I mean, just, you know, it's, it's, it's in a weird place right now, you know, it, politically and everything. And so people are, you know, there, there's, there's drama that I've never seen before. Isn't it strange? Like, uh, once you detach yourself a little bit from your, you know, current environment yeah. and you come and live here or anywhere. Right. And then you go back. It's like a, a whole different perspective. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, it's it really is. It's different. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things that are different here. You know, healthcare. You know, yeah, a lot of things yeah. are, are good. I mean, like we don't have to worry about violence. Like, really, no. I think I'm the most violent person here. <laughs> I really do. I, <laughs> Why? What did you do? <laughs> well, I, I used to be a marine. You know, so so I'm not violent here. Yeah. But, I think I would yeah, yeah. be... You qualify would, us. <laughs> yeah, I would be the worst down yeah. walking down the street, I believe. I mean, I'm not violent. I'm yeah. very nice, but... How is it at night here with all the clubs and drinking and... Yeah, you know, that's literally never a problem for me. You know, yeah. the, the only time I ever have a problem is the next morning after at 11 o'clock in the morning. That means they partied all night yeah. long. We're still partying up until 11. Yeah. They came in to buy pants so they could go to another club because I guess they had shorts and they oh. weren't allowed. These guys are still going. I know, going. I know. It's very impressive. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how they do it. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Even if you were married to a Valencian mm -hmm. woman, yeah. would, you, like, would you still move here to live here in Valencia? 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is such a great place. It's I call it affordable California, you know? <laughs> Many years ago, I worked at a jewelry store in Los Feliz. Mm -hmm. Extremely expensive. Yeah, you can't even, like sure. a quarter of this it would probably cost you like 10 grand per month. Right. It's city. super cool for, for Americans that people don't think about, but like you can fly to Paris for the weekend for yeah. 25 euro. Go to Amsterdam, go to Prague, go, you know. Exactly. It's pretty cool. You know? do, do you have like one thing that you're still not, like you can't get used to, or it's still, still a shock for you that you can't get over? Do you have something? You look how far away you and I are. This is like an American stance, but, <laughs> but if we were Spanish, you know, you'd be in yeah, my lap, way. you know, like you'd be, I mean, so that's, that's one thing that's, that's awkward for me. Yeah, it it's, and you're like, are we going to kiss? Are yeah, we going to fight? What, what are we doing what, here? What's okay. happening with our relationship, you know? And, are there other uh, American businesses opening? You know how people move here with a non-lucrative visa? Yes. Well, now oh, now it's the, the digital nomad digital visa. Nomad, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and more so, younger people, I guess, are coming. I guess. And there's so many retirees. Because I mean, it's so smart. You bought a house 30 years ago, you know, in California for 300 grand. You sell it now for 1.5 million. Yeah. You move here, you buy 10 <laughs> homes. Nine of them you rent, one you live in. And, uh, you know, and you, yeah. you go from paying 4000 or 3000 a month for their yeah. health care down to like 600 So, I mean, it's kind of a no-brainer, you know. Um, so, so many people are doing it. And I think mm -hmm. uh, more and more. It seems like everyone is looking to move, even yeah. if it's not Valencia, just somewhere better. Yeah. And some people, they can't. They're somehow tight tied up there yeah. but a lot more people i'm noticing in the yeah. comments so Me many too. people I mean, i'm not exaggerating i help at least one person a month move here so what do you think uh, makes people pick this particular area what's cool about rusafa why about are they Rusafa? coming here a lot of people love the architecture they have street cleaners like you know all yeah. morning and the afternoon so the streets are clean it's a very safe neighborhood it's cool there's cool stores there's cool yeah. bars cool restaurants you know there's good schools around it's super centrally located because you're right by the yeah. trudia and you're also right by we have a new um park here you know the central park yeah it's, central park's it's really huge. beautiful I mean, it's so pretty five years ago this was uh affor more affordable now it's not crazy out of your price range but it yeah. has gone up yeah so maybe maybe this this wave of of uh, people it's changing the prices it's much more affordable than say you know barcelona or, or right. madrid honestly i mean if i'm speaking to any american i would absolutely say to look here yeah Rusafa is Rusafa. I think people will still continue coming here because it's an attractive place it has a lot of things a lot of things going on uh, only concern is that I'm hearing some people are exploring the bars a little bit more than they should, but otherwise, really, really artsy and versatile. Yes, lots of shops and restaurants, diverse, different, but I think it's becoming a bit of a problem with transportation because more people are coming with cars and parking can be an issue in Usafa. So if you're with a car, it's not ideal. I don't think we should get any closer to Dulce de Leche. It's dangerous. No, no. Better not. Let's just go. So, when we come down to neighborhoods, you're gonna pick a place that fits, that suits your heart. It's cool here. If that's your vibe, Come to Rusafa. Canovas, one of the more fancy posh neighborhoods. I like the architecture here a lot. I would assume a lot of Americans and other foreigners are moving here because there is so much to do. Restaurants, all kinds, from traditional to international. There's a whole restaurant row here on Conde Altea. All kinds of restaurants, Argentinian, Italian, Indian, Mexican, whatnot. My favorite taco place, I can't believe the opening. It's too close. I think it's dangerously close to us. And beautiful shops, a lot of them on the higher end. And of course, prices here are, are very high to rent or buy. If this is your vibe, that's a definitely a place to check out. Canvas is also close to the park, so 
That makes it very enjoyable. And it's only 10 minutes from Cologne station. So you can grab Metro and just go anywhere. It's a very uh, connected station with different lines of Metro. And of course, biking, walking, parking here. It's better because they have some underground parking stations. Great shops as well. Hola. <laughs> ¿Qué tal? Just give us a real quick intro. This is a Vistec. It's a meat boutique, which is a, like a new concept, really. And there's there's really none like this in, in Valencia. I think we're like the first ones. Quality, yeah. Uh, Very good quality, mostly from Argentina. You lived in the States for a little bit, in the U.S.? I lived in, in many different places, actually, from, from when I was young. I yeah. went to American schools. I lived in Miami for a year. I lived in New York. And I lived in Chicago for about four years. In this neighborhood, like there are some unique, like higher end little shops like your place. Yes. I'm, I'm here, I'm here for the wine. Because I don't eat meat, but my family members are buying from here. So it's excellent. I want to really explore what's going on in the neighborhoods. And mm -hmm. like in your opinion in Canvas, like are you seeing any changes? Mostly are you seeing more Americans moving here, any difference? I'm certainly seeing more Americans coming by. I have some um, some Spanish places that are a little bit worried that maybe by so many foreigners coming here, things will change and they'll ruin the, the charm of Spain, the charm of Valencia. No, absolutely what do you not. think? I don't think so. I mean, I, I believe that especially Valencia has a huge potential of growth. It's a very modern city. It actually lacks that cosmopolitanism that you see in Barcelona or, or Madrid, I agree. for example. So yeah. I mean, there's definitely room for yeah. growth in that sense. Maybe that's the direction some people don't want to go. But I, I mean, the, the city is really modern. It offers everything that you want to do, yeah. uh, just like any other big city in Europe. So exactly. it's turning into a hotspot. Yeah, and they, they came up with an article that this is one of the best uh, places for for in. expats to live in. Yeah. And all this is new. This is exactly. dulce de leche. So you do have a lot of uh, Argentinian gourmet products. Oof. That's the café de Paris sauce to put at the end on your steak. With, er with herbs. And with, exactly, with herbs. It's got like 23 herbs, so it's like a secret recipe. And now I see these are some new Tabasco sauces. Sweet habanero mango. That's a favorite. These are like uh, just crazy spicy. Really? This, my favorite is this one, it's Chipotle. That's basically the Carolina Reaper, but... It has one, two, three, five peppers. It's <laughs> the difference between four and five is just... From one to 10, a nine and a 10. That's the beauty of it. Like people go through different neighborhoods and slowly discover these, these hidden gems. I'm gonna find something I love here. So apparently, Mount Olviet, is this how you pronounce it? Mount Olviet, Olviet. It's a neighborhood where new people are coming in. Before it was so just purely residential. We, we actually, we lived here too, in our whole year and a half B&B experience. Just one street with, uh, with restaurants and shops, but everything else is just buildings and little parks like that. And too local for me, too localized. <laughs> and so, but we're gonna see, I'm gonna meet with someone who moved from Rusafa to this neighborhood. Let's see what he thinks about that place. <laughs> oh my God, Antoinette! <laughs> you're that famous YouTuber from Valencia, right? Good. Now you're here, Mr. Yes. Rusafa is in Mount Olviet? Exactly, now Olivet? I'm Mr. Olivet. Mr. Olivet. You can call me Mr. <laughs> Olivet. <laughs> Okay, so should we sit here? Yes, this is yeah. Barden Nadia. <laughs> she almost kicked me out because oh, really? she said it's just for for customers. It's only for Montolivetans. <laughs> yeah. Montolivetans, yeah, they don't let the outsiders see. Exactly. What happened, Mr. Rusafa? Why did you move here? <laughs> what yeah. happened? It became very expensive. They when in the past year, pretty in much. In the past year, I was paying uh, seven hundred for for a flat, and then they pushed up the the price. Do you think it's because mm -hmm. a lot of Americans and other foreigners moved in? It did it this drive? the prices up? Or? I don't know, I, but you can hear a lot of English now in the streets. It was getting difficult to, to sleep. Party Rosafa, but that's only when you come as, a, as an outsider. Yeah, once you live temporarily. There. Temporarily, exactly. Or if you are there with a Airbnb or something yeah. like that. But living there, 
become really complicated. So well, that's cheers. a typical, typical drink. Vermouth Tower. Yes. It's an aperitif. <laughs> Why here? Well, it's close to Rosafa because I did, when I moved to Valencia, I started doing my whole life in Rosafa. Yeah. And I didn't want to go someplace else. I had mixed You still connected. You connected to exactly. Rosafa, yeah. I like to party, I like to drink. Yeah. But I also like to rest. I found this amazing flat near Rosafa and Monte Olivete. And I kind of feel like it's the new Rusafa. Yeah. Hopefully not in the same bad way. Cheaper, definitely. Exactly. Cheaper, definitely. More quiet. More quiet, yeah. What else? What, what's cool about this place? Like, well, you can also find spots like this that have an essence, have a soul. Have mm -hmm. People that love their job and people that take care of their, their, their spaces. Yeah. There's also places like La Buleria, uh, which have been here for many, many years. And what is that? It's a typical flamenco uh, place. Dinner uh, in flamenco? Exactly, dinner in <laughs> flamenco. But when I went there, it was only 10 euros and you can just walk in and have a good time. Wow. But now, uh, I think Monte Olivete is also gaining a little bit of that Rusafa inflation. Ah, and now it's almost 100 euros to enter. <laughs> That's a pretty big jump. Exactly. <laughs> That's not a, like a smooth transition. Exactly. It's a big jump. Exactly. It used to be very typical, typical, yeah. fully Spanish, but mm -hmm. it's gaining all of the attention, tourist attention. And well, of course, they saw uh, an yeah. opportunity. But you're, you're from Mexico. Uh, yeah. So, still um, America. <laughs> still American, but you can start to see how in hip cafes, there's people with their computer and with their big headphones, yeah. with their... Uh, Serious face? Ser yeah, serious face, <laughs> working really, really hard. And then uh, speaking in some yeah. weird languages. Ah, okay, yeah. that, that's an yeah, expat. Yeah, yeah, that's right. an expat. So maybe, maybe this place can, uh, can get some love from people that are not just going after areas that are just overly popular, but maybe they can get like a local flavor. Exactly. Living among Spanish people, but still get the quiet, nice. Oh, and I saw the number ten, the metro line. Ah, yes, they. they it's they stopping built it. here. I didn't know. Monte Olivete has become the center of Rosafa yeah. because it's where the metro line. It makes goes. things more like uh, easier to like to walk from one place to another. Exactly. So people. Yeah look in the maps and they look at the prices, the rent prices in Rosafa, and they're yeah. like, oh my God, this is so expensive. And this is right next door. This is right next to Rosafa. As, and once you live here, you, yeah. you realize it's way better than, than all of the fuss and all of the loud yeah. and drunk people. One great thing about this place is that it has accessibility to the park. It's, it's awesome. So, Monte Olivete, you get the best of both worlds. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Olive, how about like Rosafa or Cabanao, because I know also a lot of Americans live there. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Do you think they're ruining Valencia? Are they? <laughs> are they changing it in a bad way where you can't? Yeah, yeah. You know the locals won't recognize it anymore. Those <laughs> Americans, they had to get out of here. They always taking the jobs. You took the jobs. As always, it, people have mixed feelings because the main difference between being an expat and being an, and being an immigrant, it's got to do with the economics. If you're coming to a country as an immigrant, and you're looking right. for an opportunity in yeah. that country. If you're an expat, but you're working for your original country. Yeah. So, or living off investments or something. Exactly, or yeah. living off of your passive income or yeah. whatever. So in that sense, I don't think people coming from rich countries moving towards here are taking away jobs, but they're also, because they have more money to spend, mm -hmm. uh, and people from here don't have that much money to spend, so yeah. they create, uh, well, everything becomes more expensive, right? So, but besides that, I mean, how can they destroy the charm of Valencia? I don't, yeah. are they? I mean... I don't know. Except I, getting, maybe getting more spent, but also more, I think by more people coming here, more businesses are getting born or yes. they're just, you know, you, you're having a higher, more clientele, more people shopping in your shops. Exactly. Just more. Yeah, instead of taking away jobs, they're giving more I jobs. I think so. Exactly, I think so. But I mean, I feel like Valencians are very, 
like very grounded up and set very set to the ground like they're with their roots yeah uh, a lot of traditions a lot of traditions and i mean whenever people come from other different parts of the world they try to bring their own traditions they have yeah. to bring their own ways of seeing life uh, and yeah. even in the smallest things right so if you have you're not in a restaurant in valencia you're not used to uh, having someone in the door uh, greet you and welcome party for yeah. how many people please yeah. sit down right and as soon as you sit down they pour you water just like in yeah. the states yeah if uh, an american comes here and creates a restaurant uh, that's what they will do right and that's yeah. what creates culture and what keeps uh, i mean the only constant will always be change you can bring your traditions and you can embrace also the local traditions it's a it's a nice uh, I think it can be a nice mix. I think it's a cool neighborhood. And pretty much the buildings, they change from this side on. It gets a little less pampered there. The facades are really clean. Everything is really beautiful this side. And you're really close to everything, to Rusafa, to the park, to the center, to arts and sciences. So if you're looking for like a little more quiet, that has a more of a local feel, more of a traditional vibe to it, maybe that's a good place to consider. And the prices are really good here. And if you truly want to experience Valencia like a local, I have created the ultimate guide to Valencia, which I'll link in the description. There you will find the restaurants that I recommend, different neighborhoods, activities, and everything you need to know before you arrive in Valencia.